Welcome to the Better Off Bonus Call of the Week. We're sponsored by Betterment, the largest independent online financial advisor. I love these calls. I just love them because it gives me an opportunity to help you figure out how to take control of your financial life. I'll give you two chances every week to control that stuff, okay? Tuesdays, that's right now. We are dropping this on a Tuesday. It's the bonus call of the week. After our longer show on Thursdays, we've got the listener question. If you'd like to get on the air with us, just send us an email and just a little detail about what's going on. Ask Jill at betteroffpodcast.com. Ask Jill at betteroffpodcast.com. We are going to Lisa from New Jersey. Lisa, Lisa, what's going on? How I can help you out? Tell me. Hey, Jill. Thanks for uh, taking my call. Sure. Um, I have an old 401k, still at an old employer, and I wanted to know what is the best thing to do? Should I leave it there? Should I roll it over to my current employer? Should I roll it over? We currently have other accounts of Fidelity. Should we roll it over into that? Hmm. Let me ask you a quick question. So first start with old employers 401k. Where is that plan held? What what firm holds that? Uh, Truthfully, I don't know. Okay. You're working now. You've got a new 401k. Do you know um, where, what investment company, mutual fund company holds that 401k? My current account is at Hewitt. Hewitt. Oh, okay. Got it. I, I don't know what I'm not, I mean, I think that I know kind of what that might look like inside and some of the choices, but my guess is it's not the cheapest plan that's out there. I've seen it before. The reason to stay in an old 401k is that you've got this great plan. Maybe it's a plan that is like, wow, it's at Vanguard and the the, the choices are vast and they're so inexpensive and I've got tons and tons of index funds. That's one reason to keep it in the old place. Okay. Okay. To move it to a new plan, there's there's the advantage of consolidating and having everything tidy in one place, or the new plan is so much better than the old plan. Again, you know, lots of choices, index funds, all of that. And then the third choice is to roll it over into an IRA rollover account, and maybe you would do that at Fidelity. You said you had other accounts. Do you have an IRA account there already? I do. Okay. So, you know, you might want to consolidate it there. Um, Look, I'm not the cheerleader for one of these companies versus another, but, uh, you know, we know that if you're in the Fidelity family, you've got a ton of different index funds from which to choose. It's very easy to do that, um, and, and you will consolidate. So all of that being said, I think that, you know, not knowing a ton about the old plan, not thinking the new plan so great, my inclination is to roll that to the IRA rollover account that is at Fidelity already. And okay. then we get to like the larger issue, which is how am I going to invest it? How old are you, Lisa? I'm 50. Uh, married, single? Married. Okay. And um, are you maxing out your 401k right now? Uh, I'm doing 15%. 15%. Okay. And how are you guys doing just as a couple financially? Do you have kids? Are you still, are you paying for college? What's what's right now uh, happening for you? We have two you? kids, two kids, 12 and 14. Wait, you're in it, baby. Um, <laughs> we, oh, yes, we are. Um, <laughs> uh, we'd like to help them out with college, but I don't mind if they have to have some skin in the game. Mm-hmm. All right, good. And I don't mind, by the way, if they go to Rutgers. So let me just say that. The have you saved money for college? Not a lot. Okay. Um, we've been concentrating on four hundred one k as well as an emergency fund. Okay, great. Right now, if you look at your retirement assets between you and the spouse, how much total? One point eight. Nice. And you got a house? We have a house. How much do you say it's worth? Uh, it's probably worth. Three seventy five, four hundred. Mm-hmm. And we have a mo- hundred and sixty thousand dollar mortgage at three point eight seven five. Oh, sweet! That's great. Um, and you and you said you've built up your emergency reserve, so you got a nice chunk of cash that's uh, just yep. in case. Good. We we have ninety. Okay. And any other debt besides the mortgage? Nothing. Beautiful. I love this. How much do you make together? About two forty. Okay. I mean, you're in very good shape. I I, I think that, um, have you ever actually run your retirement numbers? I haven't. That's a fun thing to do. Well, we did have a a CFP we met with a couple of times. He wasn't the best fit for us. Mm -hmm. Um, We've kind of been looking for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, pulling a name up on a website 
I got you. Um, it's well, a little disconcerting. I hear you. It's it's nerve wracking. Um, you know, uh, we can help you out with that first of all. So if you want a an actual planner to help crunch numbers and look at look at retirement, look at college, make sure you've got the right health, life, disability. Make sure all the insurance stuff is done. Make sure that your estate planning is in place. That you want like a real plan. Uh, I I'm sure that we can get you a few names. And I think that what's really interesting is that oftentimes people will have this kind of situation and they'll say, "Ah, eh, all my money's in retirement accounts. I don't need a plan. Well, wait a minute. Maybe you do because you really well, want a plan. You don't necessarily need someone to manage your money. You just want to know, like, what's the game plan, right? Right. And, and in the future, we would like to have some, uh, investments outside of our retirement plan. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, that totally makes sense. I have the perfect person for you. I'm going to tell you what we're going to. Uh, I'm going to have Mark put you on hold, and he's going to give you this person's name and um, literally in your neighborhood. I think it's a great idea for you guys at this point. You got a chunk of money that is set aside for retirement. You're making good money. I think the big questions that you have about allocating your money really in line with your risk tolerance, but also trying to figure out what makes sense in terms of how much should we be saving for education? Should we be saving for education? Should we just pay this out of cash flow? And, you know, just getting a bigger picture idea. I love that idea. And then speaking of that, like, what is an appropriate fee? Because the the guy we met with charged an hourly fee, not not a, we don't really have any investments outside of our retirement, mm-hmm. so we can charge a percentage. Mm-hmm. So, what, what was the hourly fee that you were quoted? Uh, I think at the time he was charging us two fifty an hour. That's not bad. Uh, you know, I think that that's probably in line. But I do also think that there are plenty of people who will say, "I will do a plan for you he, instead of an hourly." You know, pay me three grand and I'll do a financial plan. I don't know what that is, but I'm just saying that I think there's okay. plenty of people who will give you. I like a flat fee myself. Rather than hourly, okay. I don't know. I just like I think hourly is always like, oh, are you calling me because you want to talk to me, or you want to, talk, you know, like <laughs> I want to know what the yeah. Fee no, is. I found this guy also like to chat a lot about himself. Yeah, and then he also told us that given our um, age, we would probably need to work until we were seventy. That's interesting. G- given our you know generation, I don't know about that. I mean, maybe it depends what you want. Like if you said, you know, what we're going to do when um, you know, well, first of all, I mean, your kids are young. So, you know, you're kind of screwed anyway. You're probably going to work for at least, you know, let's say 15 years, to, you know, 60s yes. till 12 year old gets through college. Right. And yeah. uh, presuming you like what you do, then like rock on, keep it's doing okay. it. Right. But it's if okay. you if you're like, eh, I want to do something else, then I'm so like bought in on this idea of like the the next career, you know, in your 50s, 60s, 70s, because I do think that. There is something to be said for people who remain engaged in the work world. I'm not saying you have to work as hard as you work, but being able to do something and have a place to go, I think it's fantastic. So, I mean, I think that second career would be great. Yeah. And I think that that's really has a lot to do with how you communicate what your goals are to uh, to a financial planner. I mean, that's really the issue. So if that's something you're like, oh, my God, that turns my stomach. I don't want to do that. Then the planner should be able to say, "Okay, well, here's plan B. And here's plan C and here's plan D. Right. Here's what we're going to do. Mark is going to give you some info. Hang on one second and um, we will absolutely positively help you out. And I wish you the very best of luck. And again, I'm just going to say this. Rutgers. 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 <laughs> well, I'm, I'm a state school girl myself. There you go. Perfect. All right. Thanks so much for calling, Lisa. All right. Thanks. Take care. Okay, that's a wrap of our Better Off Bonus Question of the Week. If you've got a question, it's simple. Send us an email at askjill at betteroffpodcast.com. We'll arrange to get you on. And don't forget, in just a couple of days, there's a brand new episode of the Better Off Podcast sponsored by Betterment. Talk to you then. Betterment.